The Blue Hat signaling device introduced in video number 44 was the first board I released using the modular concept around the IoT stick. That was about three years ago, so it was time for some adjustments to the design. In this video, I show step by step how you can build and test your own Blue Hat. And to make it really easy, I have added a Blue Hat kit version to the Tindy store. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I'm Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I'm happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. The Blue Hat can drive a string of NeoPixel LEDs and you can control color, blink rate, brightness and a few other things of each individual LED using commands sent via DCC or Loconet. It can react to turnout commands, for example, to make an LED indicating the position of a turnout. It is possible to combine the positions of up to three turnout addresses to display patterns on multi-aspect signals. This, of course, can also be done using the NMRA signal commands if they are supported by your command station. When receiving the commands via Loconet, LEDs can also display the track power status, the status of a push button, or the position of a potentiometer input, and more. Receiving the commands and driving the LED string is done by the IoT stick. In the past, the hat was connected to the stick, and an additional bracket was used to install everything on the layout. With the new revision, I have made the board longer, so that it now includes the space needed for the stick. The other major change is that I have included the buck converter into the PCB, which helps to keep the cost low as it simplifies the assembly process. If you want to use the blue hat on your layout, there are three ways to get one. You can order the ready-made device from the Tindy store listed in the description below. Or you can build your own device either from scratch or based on the DIY kit. To build the Blue Hat from scratch, you find everything you need on the GitHub page listed in the description. Schematics, PCB layout, bill of materials and the STL files for the enclosure. The schematics are available as PDF and as JSON file that you can load into the free Easy EDA design software. To have the PC board manufactured, you can download the Gerber file along with the bill of materials and parts placement file for the robot. With these files, you can order assembled PCBs from your PCB manufacturer. I usually order my PCBs from JLC PCB mainly because they cooperate with a parts supplier and they have the most user-friendly ordering web page. The files that you download from the GitHub page typically should work for placing a PCB order including assembly. And in case one or several of the used parts are not available at the time of the order, you can use the design software to replace them and recreate the production files. JLC PCB offers a hobby-friendly option of ordering five PCBs and only two of them assembled with components, so that might be a good option to get started even if you are an electronics novice. Once you receive the boards, you can assemble them by following the steps described in the assembly and testing instructions published on the GitHub page. The first step is to do a visual inspection of the boards and this gives me an opportunity to show you my latest tool, which is a handy microscope from Link Micro. They recently contacted me and offered to send me a free LM246MS microscope to use in my videos. Now, I'm normally not doing that, but since I was looking for something to replace my old magnifier glasses anyway, I agreed. A few days later I received the package, so thanks to Link Micro for sending that device. Unboxing and assembling the microscope was a piece of cake and done in a few minutes. 
I assembled everything without problems, just following the instructions that came with the product. But in addition, there are also links to YouTube videos that explain individual assembly steps in greater detail. The microscope comes with three different lenses for different working distances and magnification factors. I mostly use lenses L and A for my work, as I need enough space between the lens and the object to work on with the soldering iron or the hot air gun. One thing that I really like is that the microscope can be connected to a USB port, so I can take pictures or videos of whatever I am working on, which is of course useful for documentation purposes and for making videos as well. Here I am using lens A for a visual inspection of the board. This is great for getting an overview and if I want to see something in greater detail, I can change to lens L for having a closer look. If everything looks good, I use a side cutter and shorten the legs of the DC barrel jack as they are too long to fit in the enclosure. After cutting, it is best to quickly touch them up with a soldering iron to make sure that the soldering joints are properly conducting. Next, you can download the STL files from the GitHub page, load them into your 3D printer and about two hours later, you should have a nice enclosure for your Bluehead device. Really simple, but if you think you are not familiar with all that, you can conveniently order a blue hat kit from the Tindy store, which comes with an assembled PC board, the 3D printed enclosure, and the other parts that are needed to assemble the blue hat as shown in this spill of material. Once you have all the parts available, you can start the assembly process, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you step by step how to build and test your blue hat. The first step is soldering the NeoPixel LED to the component side of the board. The best way to do this is dispensing some soldering paste on the soldering pads. Then use tweezers to carefully place the LED in the designated spot. Make sure to orient it correctly. The small triangle on the housing of the LED must match with the triangle on the PC board silk screen. After placing, you can use a hot air gun to heat the LED for about 30 seconds until the solder paste melts. It is best to use a low temperature solder paste for this process so that you are not desoldering some of the other components. If you don't have a heat gun available, it is also possible to solder the LED using a fine point soldering iron. In this case, put some flux paste on the soldering pads to facilitate the flow of the solder. The next component to be mounted is the 90 degree stick connector. The easiest way to do that is inserting the connector into an IOTT stick, place it in the correct position and solder the pins on the bottom side of the board. Step 3 is installing the NeoPixel pigtail. Typically the wires are colored white for ground, red for 5 volts and green for the NeoPixel control signal. On the board the pin with the square soldering pad is ground. The signal is the middle hole and the third pad is for the red 5 volt wire. Insert the wires into the holes from the bottom side of the board and solder them on the top side. I find it most convenient to use a third hand crocodile clip to hold the wires in place while soldering. When done, verify that they are completely inserted and that the polarity is correct.
Before placing the blue head board in the enclosure, we verify that it is working as designed. First, connect an IoTT stick to the stick connector. Then, connect an LED matrix or a string of NeoPixels to the NeoPixel pigtail. Now, use a DC power supply between 8 and 16 volts and connect it to the DC barrel connector. You should see the IoTT stick booting up. If it is the first time, you will have to configure the IoTT stick to your Wi-Fi network or as standalone access point. You now can point a web browser to the IP address indicated on the stick display. The browser comes up with the configuration page where you can select Blue Hat as a head device and configure a Loconet or DCC command source of your choice. Click Save and Restore and wait until the LED Chain Setup tab is displayed. Open the LED Chain Setup tab and configure one or two LEDs on the LED matrix. Click Save and Restore to store the settings on the stick, then issue commands from your command station and watch the LEDs changing color, brightness, etc. according to the settings you made. If everything is working, it's time to put the blue headboard in the housing and finalize the assembly process. Place the PCB in the lower frame of the enclosure, the IoT stick end first. Make sure the wires of the pigtail connector are properly placed in the opening of the enclosure and are not crossed over in the opening space between PCB and bottom of the case. If everything is ok, the PCB should insert flush with the enclosure. If not, wiggle the pigtail wires until everything fits. Next, place the top part of the enclosure over the component area of the PCB. Make sure the tiny notches along the rim of the top cover fit between PCB and bottom cover and the enclosure can be firmly closed. Use a small screwdriver to align the holes in the PC board with the screw holes in the enclosure. Now use a hex key to drive in the M2 screws. Carefully drive them until you feel the torque is increasing significantly, then stop. Turn them in until the enclosure is completely closed, but be careful not to over tighten them. That's it, your blue hat is now complete and operational. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and I was able to show you that building your own blue hat really is a piece of cake, at least when using the do-it-yourself kit. If so, please leave a comment below to let me know and click the like button. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe to the IOTT channel and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when new videos come out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.